we are now recording. All right, so again, welcome back to, or welcome to uh, Forestry 220 Intro to Forest Rec. I'm your professor, Dr. Logan Park, and man, it is really good to see a couple of your faces. Uh, it's been sort of a long, dark, and quiet uh, winter break, and I'm glad that we are back, mostly on campus. We do have a couple of students um, who've reached out to me and said that uh, they are home right now with COVID or you know, self-quarantining after exposure, kind of waiting to hear back on test results and stuff like that. Um, so, you know, to kind of not just follow the law, but be a good neighbor, treat others like we want to treat ourselves. Um, I will always uh, attempt to record each class session that's by Zoom um, so that folks who are following along from home uh, can, you know, follow along. It will usually take me a couple of hours to, um, like, transcode the video, uh, make any edits, you know, trim stuff down uh, and that sort of thing and then get it up onto the course website. But um, I promise I will I will get that done each time um, as long as you don't have like a recording equipment fail or whatever. And um, what that means for you practically taking this class is that, uh, you know, if there's a particular morning or something where uh, I know a lot of you are also working part time or full time jobs, uh, right now, you can take this class a little bit more asynchronously than uh, in other semesters where, you know, we'd have everybody gathered in Ag 166 down the hall and um, all together at the same place at the same time. So COVID, in a way, makes this class a little bit more flexible. Um, if you are among the many people, me included, that struggles a little bit more with kind of meaningfully learning stuff in a Zoom context, um, like I think I said uh, on the course website, Zoom is nobody's favorite tool for anything. Um, and Zoom fatigue is the real thing. So um, that's okay. I understand. I've been there myself and that is okay. Um, so we're gonna be uh, trying to sort of just get stuff done as normally as possible. Um, so for about the second half of the semester uh, after what would have been spring break, which is canceled this year, uh, we're starting later and ending earlier this semester so that folks don't leave, bring back COVID, you know, uh, just like with Thanksgiving break um, last semester. And uh, so basically after kind of the midpoint of the semester, about mid-March, um, we'll start meeting on campus together at a regular time, 10 to 10.50. And uh, basically doing some lab exercises and field exercises uh, outside around campus. Um, it's just, we can't make uh, being in a classroom perfectly safe this semester. Uh, we can uh -huh. reduce a bunch of risks, but we can't quite get it perfectly. So what we're gonna do is uh, do that stuff outside when we have beautiful weather and folks can uh, arrive and, and focus uh, on what the task at hand is, whatever it is that day, uh, uh, instead we, of like shivering. Sorry. Yeah, Rolf, what's up? Uh, I have a question. Uh, do For the exercises, do we need to have a car? Because I don't have a car. I live no, on no, campus, no, but no. I don't have a car or anything to drive around in. Yeah, yeah, we're not going to make any assumptions about that. Um, and that's a good question. Uh, that kind of leads into the next point. Uh, if you have any, um, like, individualized learning needs or mobility considerations in particular, um, uh, that's fine, you know. Uh, DSS is the office on campus um, that kind of helps coordinate the efforts to make sure that you have, you know, enough time on quizzes if you need extra time or a uh, note taker or whatever. Um, that's totally fine. I'm 100% on board with that. And every semester we got, you know, one or up to several. Um, that's kind of normal. So uh, if that's you, go ahead and contact them and then they reach out to me. Um, you got to go through them and then at that point I can unlock all sorts of easy uh, accommodations or whatever you need, right? Whatever. Uh, no big deal. Um, for any freshmen or folks starting this semester, uh, here in a sec I'll go through our course website, just super quick uh, dime tour and um, show you where stuff like the syllabus is currently and where a bunch of our course materials will be in a sec so you know where to find those and how to access that stuff as easily as possible. Um, before I get into that stuff, are there any other questions like Raul had? 
Uh, is there any other material other than like the textbook and notebook paper or pencils that we need for the course, like that's, something specific? No, well, that's pretty much it. Um, as far right. as stuff that you need to get separately from whatever I'll be able to provide. Um, we'll use a series of PDFs this semester, some um, technical mm -hmm. science, like hard science, uh, forestry research articles and stuff like that. Um, we'll have some just like popular articles like journalism type stuff, uh, blog posts, that sort of thing um, to highlight a couple of issues in forest rec management. And um, I've got all that stuff assembled for you. We're, we're pretty well good to go on that. But do you need a copy of the book? Uh, if you take a look at the syllabus, so let's um, get you guys oriented to our course website. And it's just D2L. So if you've already uh, used D2L in the past, which you probably did if you were here last semester and so forth, um, you can, you know, maybe tune out for the next couple of minutes, but uh, I'll show folks uh, who are not familiar what to do with that. Okay. So this is uh, our course website, mycourses.siu.edu. And um, when you log into it on like a desktop browser, it's going to be uh, a left column for announcements like university wide announcements and then the right side of course is a link to each of your classes um, if you're on mobile it's gonna try to stack that stuff so that the announcements are first and you can dismiss them one by one if you want to kind of clear them out and you know the actual good stuff which you came for the class links um, are actually kind of the last thing on the page um, so if you follow the link for forestry 220 section one intro to forest rec um, that'll bring you to that announcements section kind of the front page of the class and uh, you'll see there i've posted i know a bunch of you already checked it um, first couple of announcements one over the weekend and one uh, just before class started today so um, generally we're going to use the course website for content so the third link at the top um, in desktop view is content and when you click on that, it'll give you this long table of contents on the left hand side. I'll have a bunch of different modules like uh, history of forest rec, um, you know, career arcs, professional tracks, like how do you get a job doing this forestry stuff um, and all of that on the left hand side. And so far, the only thing visible for you guys is the syllabus. So remember, um, my view as a professor might look a little bit different than yours at the moment. Um, it should look like this for you. All right, so front page, third link at the top, across the top is content. Click that and then click either version of the syllabus. One's a PDF, one's a Word doc in case you really need that. And um, we'll go through some of those syllabus details. All right, so you've got my contact info at the top of this thing and that's legitimate. Um, I'll see text messages uh, a little bit faster than I will emails. Um, I'm going to, you know, try and check and respond to emails every day, of course. Um, but like most of us, my phone is, you know, permanently attached to my face. So I'll probably see a text message first. Just let me know who you are when you're sending a text message because I just get uh, the content of your message and your phone number. I have no idea who I'm, who I'm responding to. Um, so that just helps us a little bit with that. Again, if you need to contact DSS for anything individualized with quizzes or note taking, whatever, that's fine. Um, and if you have a mobility need that might sort of affect how you're doing any of our outdoor labs, you know, just around the ag building, around Campus Lake, uh, on campus later on the spring, that's okay too. Um, maybe let them know that and send me a message. It's confidential uh, and we'll make sure that those activities are just as effective for you as they are for anybody else. Um, purpose of our class here is, again, like we were saying right at the top of this, um, just to get your feet on the ground with thinking about this sector of forest management career tracks. Um, so forest and outdoor rec is profoundly an American thing. We invented the idea of a national park service and national parks for all the people, um, period, like that is, never been a thing in history in all of human history 17,000 years of uh, 
human culture, we kind of started that train. So that's pretty cool. Um, and because we're kind of the leader in that, it means something pretty different for Americans versus the rest of the world. Um, we have access to, to experience and places and career tracks that most other folks, uh, most other countries are even today still just just now kind of catching up to. Um, so we want to get you sort of familiar with that and comfortable with it. Um, this is a big deal financially. Uh, individual states just in hunting and fishing are doing billions of dollars, billions with a B. Uh, so that's nine zeros after the number um, of economic activity on a yearly basis, just with forest and outdoor recreation. This is a big deal. And um, there's a lot of a lot of ways to make a pretty good living and a very satisfying and meaningful living uh, doing this kind of thing. So we'll talk about what some of those different career tracks look like. Um, we'll talk about how we got here. So again, that history and kind of the philosophy uh, piece of it, like how do people think about this stuff? Um, and we'll start to, mostly in the second half of the semester, start to introduce, all right, so what do park rangers, what do conservation police, law enforcement rangers, what are they doing on a, like a day in day out basis? What are some of the basic field techniques that they're using? Uh, we got a couple of other classes, you know, at the junior and senior level that kind of pick those apart uh, and go into way more detail. Uh, park and wildlife management, forestry 420, uh, recreation summer camp, which is awesome, uh, is for that direction as well. So keep those in mind. And if this class totally doesn't scare you off, I would love to see you in any of those uh, upper level classes. They're pretty fun, in my biased opinion. Um, so our course objective section on the syllabus basically takes us through what we're going to do, not so much in order, but in a little bit more detail. So we're going to develop appreciation for outdoor recreation and related thinkers and philosophies. Why is this good? Why is it worth having national parks and park rangers versus, you know, opening up another Mall of America in Yellowstone? We totally could do that, but we chose not to. Why? Um, we'll talk about some just like core definitions of leisure and related key concepts. Um, and this year we're also gonna bring in the extra layer of uh, like climate change. So we'll talk a lot about how parks are kind of the, um, America and the world uses our national park system as a benchmark set of sites, like how things should look if they're mostly natural since the park services job is to preserve those lands to the very highest standard. Um, more so than other organizations that are mostly conserving and trying to produce, you know, pulp for um, toilet paper, uh, board feet of timber to build houses for Americans and stuff like that. Uh, the parks are set aside for um, preservation and the utmost caretaking instead. Um, we'll examine various forms of outdoor recreation and their individual and societal benefits, which is a super nerdy way of saying we're going to look at what's fun and why it's fun and why people like to do it. Um, in this section of the class, we'll also have some uh, pretty hilarious to me, at least, uh, sort of like epic fails of forest and outdoor recreation, people getting catapulted over cliffs or, you know, all kinds of stuff, uh, getting chased by amorous moose. I mean, you know, there's never a dull moment. So um, from there, we'll get into uh, survey of career options and rec management. Um, we'll start this section pretty early since the federal hiring for forestry, including recreation and fire management and all that stuff. Um, that got started back in like November. So uh, we're still at the sort of middle slash tail end of the hiring wave. If you want to get some uh, experience doing forestry stuff career wise this summer, for example. Um, so we'll kind of front load that so you can get your resume up and running. And um, then we'll sort of slide into the historical events from, again, like 17,000 years ago when human culture first started in places like Gobekli Tepe in Turkey, uh, in modern day Turkey. And, um, you know, we'll talk about ancient China and Egypt and then all the way up through, um, you know, equipping, we'll take it up to like the present day and then sort of the near future with you know, strapping a bunch of basically snowmobile treads onto your four by four truck and going not mudding, but just like careening through the snow uh, in your four by four. It's 
pretty fantastic. Uh, we'll talk about stuff like jet packs and uh, convertible ATV jet skis and all kinds of stuff. So um, it'll take us up right through modern day and um, not just really to like do a product demonstration of, look, we can strap snowmobile treads to our trucks and it's super fun. But we'll talk about, okay, so what does that mean for you as a park ranger? when folks can strap snowmobile treads to their trucks and stuff like that. What does that mean for you as a conservation police officer? Um, we'll, take, uh, we'll take a pretty quick tour through the different kind of levels of different agencies and organizations that wanna hire you as a park ranger or all those related career tracks. Um, so international like UN Biosphere Reserve sites, um, cooperatively managed transboundary parks. Uh, there's some places that like uh, Canada and the United States sort of run uh, transboundary parks as a big unit. Uh, of course, the federal system, we got you know, Crab Orchard National Wildlife Refuge, uh, Department of Interior, we got you know, Shawnee National Forest, Department of Agriculture um, with some pretty different management goals. And they're, they're physically touching in places and so you can get different look and feel, different style, different ecosystem management applications, and also have to do a bunch of collaboration on stuff like wildland fire management since they do touch. Uh, so what does that look like? But we'll also talk about some state and local places. Um, a bunch of my recent graduates have gone to work for um, IDNR and uh, even just like county park systems. So the equivalent of like uh, Carbondale city parks. Um, you know, like wherever they are back home. So we'll talk through some of those and kind of lay out that whole landscape and help you understand that you have so many more job openings and opportunities than you think you do with this. Absolutely. Um, we'll also talk about the land of milk and honey where the hunters and fly fishermen and skiers and backpackers flock like the salmon of Capistrano. Uh, so Colorado and Wyoming are like this mythical, amazing place. And they are mythical and amazing. Um, but there's like 48 other states where forest and outdoor rec is awesome. And if you think stuff around the Shawnee or around the Rocky Mountains is pretty epic, wait till we get to talking about Alaska and Hawaii. It's unbelievable. Um, so we'll go through some of that. Um, and kind of hopefully throughout the semester, we'll be kind of pitching a bunch of different local recreation opportunities. Uh, if you scroll to the very end of the syllabus here, or page over to it if you printed it out because you like the dead tree version, um, you're gonna see that that could be an extra credit thing for this class. And the extra credit counts like hugely in this class because we can sit here on Zoom all day and talk about forest recreation, or we can go out and learn, you know, some more about forest recreation by doing some forest recreation. So we wanna make sure that is front and center as an option for you right from day one today. Um, so if you like going to Giant City State Park or if you've never been to Giant City State Park, it's time. All right, uh, further to Raul's earlier question, uh, we have one required course material. It is Jensen and Guthrie's Outdoor Recreation in America. Uh, they do a pretty good job of just lying out in super easy terms. It's not a hard textbook. Uh, it's pretty well organized. Just the basics of, okay, so these are the federal land management agencies. Here's how they are the same and different from state agencies and stuff like that. Just real nice, clear layout um, and does an okay job of lining out some of those career options for you so that you feel pretty confident that you're going somewhere with this degree uh, and this class that we are equipping you for the real world and, uh, helping you put food on the table someday when that time comes. Um, you'll notice it's just the sixth edition, which came out in 2006. Um, like the newer editions, similar textbooks, they're fine. They're all kind of the same as, as what we got listed here. So my hope with using an old edition of the book, because this information doesn't really change very much, um, you can save a bunch of money and find a super cheap used copy online. Uh, if you're mighty smart and you're the fastest one out the gate, you can probably get a copy of this book from a uh, university library or uh, from interlibrary loan across the fair state of Illinois for free and, um, and do just fine with that. 
Uh, I would never advocate that anybody goes online and downloads a PDF of your textbook. That would be illegal. Okay. Um, and like I said, um, any additional articles beyond that textbook, I'll provide for you. Don't worry about that. Um, your job for this class is not to have to go hunt down a bunch of information in the library stacks. It's to start thinking about forest and forest outdoor recreation. Um, grades in this class, pretty straightforward. Uh, it's gonna be an even smattering of participation. Um, and so the participation stuff is again, gonna be really the second half of the semester when we're on campus and doing some stuff uh, around Campus Lake, just practicing basic park rangering stuff. Um, we'll have a couple of quizzes. Sometimes we have a midterm, midterm exam, we have a final exam. Um, quizzes and the exams are 50% of your grades. So uh, when we do have them, um, generally I'll announce them beforehand so you have a chance to prepare, but um, they're actually going to be pretty short and quick. Like we're not we're not spending our lives, we're not spending tuition dollars to take tests all the time. So um, we'll try to keep those nice and short and quick. And I'm generally not trying to trick you guys with those quizzes. It should be hopefully a pretty straightforward uh, short set of questions each time um, from the most recent class material. All right, uh, and then of course, class activities and exercises. So that'll be some take home stuff solo, uh, especially during COVID, the first half of the semester. and um, and stuff like that. Okay, so that's each one of those combines uh, as an even 25% of your grade. And the rest is kind of on us to just participate and be present. Um, there's a bunch of paragraphs following that about things like academic integrity. Um, you know, do your own work, turn your own work in. Uh, I don't understand why somebody would pay a bunch of tuition uh, or take a loan out to have someone else pay your tuition and then pay them back with interest um, and then cheat in a class and not actually learn the stuff that you're paying for. So, um, you know, cite other people's work when you use it. Um, represent yourself as yourself. This is rarely a problem, but when it is, you know, we got to drop the band hammer on stuff like that and, uh, and deal with it fairly uh, quickly and intensively. Um, while we're all on Zoom, this is probably not gonna be an issue, but uh, I was a student at Virginia Tech when that whole massacre happened. So um, let's talk just for a sec about large scale emergencies. While we're at home doing this on Zoom, fine, no big deal. Um, when we are together, uh, if something should happen and uh, we get an update from campus safety and security that uh, there is like an active event happening, um, we'll probably try to hunker down in place first while we figure out what's going on. And the moment we get the clear, um, we're gonna get the heck out of there, like go all the way home out of there. Um, so if it comes to it, uh, we'll have folks barricading the doors, grabbing improvised weapons. Unfortunately, your concealed carry firearms are not legal on campus. Uh, so please don't bring those in from your car, but um, yeah, get ready to, uh, to beat any interlopers unmerciful with whatever. Uh, in the name of safety. And if we have to climb out windows, I'll help you do that. Okay. Um, following that, we've got kind of a long, again, uh, longer list of what this class is about. So take a look through that. I've got the chapters associated with each of those sections uh, in the Jensen and Guthrie textbook kind of lined out right there. Um, and I'll try to cue you guys on when to read each of those. Uh, so fundamental concepts, definitions, uh, local outdoor rec opportunities, career opportunities, how to get your federal resume all set up, um, benefits of leisure and outdoor rec, like why we're doing this stuff, and how we make sure that we're maximizing those benefits with a minimum environmental cost. Um, because like I said earlier, we have to deal with climate change. Our generations are the ones that are getting handed um, a planet that is, in a few ways, it's kind of starting to go into organ failure. Um, so we'll kind of pick that apart a little bit and see what that means for um, being a forester, being a park ranger, but also just being a human that doesn't want to get killed in some super hurricane or mudslide or whatever, um, or some uh, tropical illness. Yeah, fire away. 
uh, for the course content, will you be doing putting up like uh, the like PowerPoints on D two L or just going to be putting up like the uh, yeah. the lectures on there or how are you going to do that? So both, um, everything's gonna be available to you through D2L. So again, if you can't make a particular class session because you are half dead from COVID or whatever, um, that's okay. You can sort of pick it back up um, when you're feeling okay. I'm trying to be super flexible about timelines this semester. So you're noticing that I'm not putting anything in a hard uh, set of deadlines at the moment. And um, the order of things is a little bit negotiable. Uh, just as conditions change. Um, for example, last spring uh, and the year before, we had um, some absolutely crazy record-breaking wildfires. If you remember those from uh, the Western United States, mm -hmm. but also like Australia, that created a smoke plume that went all the way around from one side of Australia, all the way around the globe and was making uh, unsafe conditions on the other coast of Australia having gone all the way around the ocean, the Southern Ocean. Mm -hmm. um, but also in places like Siberia and Alaska and Northern Sweden, like above the Arctic Circle, um, we've had unprecedented fires in human history. And um, that absolutely changes the game as far as uh, a lot of people's survival. So, you know, we'll talk about stuff like that and what that means. Um, and we'll tackle targets of opportunity like that as they start to come up. So this is a good list. This is enough of a, a list to get through this semester, but we'll also kind of customize stuff for what's actually happening around us this semester so we can talk about it and so forth. Sam, you got a question? Yes, I do. Uh, so I'm currently in the natural resource management specialization. Um, okay. But of course the forest rec is awesome. Uh, so basically I was just wondering like how hard would it be for someone uh, who has natural resource management specialization um, to still receive offers that would historically go to forest rec majors? Oh, um, yeah, that's not a problem at all. So, um, are you interchangeable, or is, are there a few I'd be locked out of? Not at all. So, there's a ton of uh, we use a, a forest. Uh, forest uh, resource management terms, a little bit of cross-pollinization between um, these disciplines. So uh, certainly within the forestry department, everybody is a forestry major. And the specializations allow you to tweak and um, kind of customize things to get a little bit sharper in a particular direction. But just like every marine or rifleman, like you're all foresters, uh, we're all foresters. And um, you're going to see a lot of folks get into being a park ranger by working on a wildland fire crew first to get that sort of crucial first federal foot in the door, you know, uh, right. get federal standing and a couple of seasons of experience under your belt. And then you jump over into being a park ranger, which is a, a pretty elite and exclusive set of folks. Um, and, and vice versa, like it's, super common for, um, you know, some of my students to uh, graduate as foresters, but specifically forest rec folks, and then never work a day formally as a rec ranger in their lives. Um, but, you know, doing a bunch of adjacent forestry stuff. So, yeah, I mean, it's all good news as far as that goes. That's yeah. a great question. Thanks for asking that. Uh, you were in the Marines? Pardon? Were you in the Marines? I just assumed because because you said that. Yeah. No, we have uh we do have a lot of folks who've served um or are like active reserves now, you know. Um that's a fairly sizable minority among our students here. So if any of you guys and gals are um either active duty military or um you know prior service, or whatever, uh you're in good company here. Also a bunch of Eagle Scouts. We have a ton of Eagle Scouts here. Yeah, I've noticed anyway, that. Yeah. Um so good question. Uh, any other questions at this point? This is most of the content covered a couple of different ways in the syllabus. Um, and again, the whole thing ends up with like a two page or a one page long 
That's a weird page break in there, but uh, page and a half long list of different example extra credit opportunities from previous years. Um, and don't feel like you got to spend any money to do any of them. Um, that's not, that's not the issue. That's not the goal. So a bunch of them are free and um, a bunch of them are recurring this year as well. So one thing we saw with uh, COVID this past year, and we're right at today, we're at the one year anniversary of a bunch of um, like federal announcements about COVID. Hey, this is going to be an issue. Get ready. Um, is that park visitation and everything else kind of cratered, just like went down to nothing for a little while. And then it exploded. Um, we're seeing in a lot of places, particularly in urban proximate parks, so like Carbondale uh, parks or like Cook County Forest Preserve or, um, you know, the, the places around the zoo in St. Louis, um, their visitation like on a daily basis was doubling, quadrupling, quintupling in some cases um, because people were, they had to be home, but they didn't want to be inside. And all of a sudden it's like uh, some some forestry and park management folks were not blindsided, but kind of slammed, you know, um, things got way busier than we were used to. And there's a, a bunch of ways to respond pretty sanely to uh, jumps in demand like that. And there's some ways to kind of fumble the ball on it and let a bunch of environmental damage happen. Uh, let a bunch of unsafe conditions for people happen, a bunch of wildlife impacts um, and so forth. So this semester um, we're going to kind of see how this plays out with vaccines rolling out and uh, folks hopefully being able to uh, feel pretty comfortable and legitimately be safe, uh, especially outdoors, out and about doing stuff. So um, with that, uh, unless we have any other questions, that's pretty much the syllabus. Um, uh, so yeah, Raul, what's up? This is kind of personal, but more of like, on the lines of, uh, how do you say, for the disabilities, I was wondering, have you got, I sent you my disability, uh, I think I sent it to you, have you got, received it, uh, any emails from DSS? I have not, but usually they don't send stuff out on like day one, um, okay. they take, yeah, it's probably close to a week to um, get through everybody, because it's super busy for them at the beginning of the semester, of course. Uh, and then they're just kind of maintaining and stuff like that. So, yeah, I'll keep an eye out for that. Um, haven't received it yet. So, okay. If that's if that's you for anybody else, um, don't panic. We'll get that stuff all squared away um, every semester. So, what other questions you got for the extra credit? Uh, you'd make a report. Would that just be like a page, or like, or would it have to be like a couple of pages for like the report to send to you for extra credit? On what you not learn. even a page yeah so i'm less interested in the report than i am you actually getting out there and spending time you'd otherwise be spending writing the report out doing and learning about force and outdoor rec by encountering it first person so a solid paragraph just kind of detailing what where when who why how um Capture a short video, upload it to YouTube, send me the link. Um, take a couple of photos, caption each photo. Here's a, a muddy section of trail. And we talked about, you know, how to construct trail a couple of weeks ago in class, Dr. Park. So I found an example of that and how they're messing this up and what they could do about it. Um, but yeah, it doesn't have to be a, a super fancy formal thing. Um, there's not any particular structure to it like there would be for a lab report. So yeah. Um, the goal is to, to push everybody outside and into this stuff as safely as possible um, and not scare anybody off with heavy writing assignments. Does that make sense? Yes, that makes sense. I just want to make sure. Thank you. Cool. Yeah, right on. Um, typically, we'll get a couple of these from a couple of people throughout the semester. And then like April 15th through April... 28th or so, uh, you know, as the semester's finishing up and people are kind of panicking about grades and stuff like that, I get flooded with them. Um, also because the weather's, you know, pretty nice at that point. But um, even though today's in the 20s and 30s and kind of cloudy, 
this is awesome hiking weather. You're not going to sweat out. You're not going to get marauded by ticks in Southern Illinois um, with their expanded range of zoonotic diseases like uh, Ehrlichia and Lyme disease and all that stuff. Um, Southern Illinois has some tick issues, but now you'd never know it. So by all means, uh, front load the semester, get outside a little bit. Um, download this class. If you're not able to make the class session uh, onto your phone, throw on some headphones and go for a walk in the woods. I would love that. That would be perfect. So um, yeah, the uh, extra credit is easy and ubiquitous. I have a question. So for the extra credit, like basically any outdoor activities count for it? Like, like you can go like biking or hiking or anything and it'll still count? Yeah, for sure. Okay. Um, yeah, so anything that's, I mean, not like re-roofing a house. That doesn't really have anything to do with. Yeah. <laughs> no, I was just meeting, but, because yeah. like they just opened up a mountain bike trail at Touch of Nature. So like that kind yes. of trail will still count. Okay. Thanks. Absolutely, it does. Um, and some of my uh, former students, I, I guess I have this semester as grad students now. Uh, if you know Ray and Taryn Beery, um, you know, just graduated as undergrads and um, they've been working their butts off over there to cut that trail. Uh, and I've been working with JD Tanner to help um, get that work funded and designed sustainably. We've been working with the um, International Mountain Biking Association, IMBA, uh, Southern Illinois Mountain Biking, SIMBA. Yeah, um, it's like a really nice a trail. Deal. Like I've, I've been out there a lot, especially over break when I had nothing to do. And yeah, like the trail is super nice. They have a lot of cool like technical areas. So yeah, it's good. Totally worth it. All right. So for everybody who does not know where that is, Sophia, how do you get to the trailhead in that new little parking lot over there? Okay. So if you're going on like Giant City Road, like you're going to Giant City State Park, Right before you get to the real hilly section, as I like to think about it, you have Touch of Nature's the sign and everything. Then just like turn down there. They just build a new parking lot and everything for that. Then they have a trailhead. And like along the trail, they have all kinds of maps because they have all different loops for different levels. So, yeah. Yeah. So the goal here is explicitly to make uh, Southern Illinois um, an absolutely premium mountain biking destination like JD wants to have people so impressed with this trail system that they come and stay at touch nature and use it kind of like a and b uh, and we use it as an outdoor classroom and stuff like that and then you know come pedal around um, this next session of the mountain biking that we're laying out right now is uh, a butts uh, one of the wineries down there and that'd be a pretty sweet long weekend staycation or vacation for somebody coming in from far away um so i want all of you guys to just understand and appreciate this is an amazing amazing resource and kayaking fishing uh just scrambling through the woods all that stuff is awesome at touch of nature um they got fire rings and campsites just um the trails are sort of partially built and supervised by uh, kelly pearson who's the trails and wilderness coordinator on the Shawnee National Forest. And she literally won the nationwide level, the federal level award for being a trails coordinator and volunteer coordinator um, within the forest service. Like she is one of the top trails people without exaggeration in the world. And she's helping to build these trails for you and for me and for everybody else. And it's right here in our backyards. Touch of Nature is like, what, 15, 20 minutes from campus, maybe? Uh, so, yeah, throw your 29er in your car. That's a 29-inch diameter mountain bike wheel. We'll talk about how the technology of metallurgy and composites made the 29er wheel a forest recreation possibility versus the earlier 26-inch wheels. And before them, the original beach cruisers used on logging roads in Marin County in California by folks like Gary Fisher, man, uh, back in the day in the 60s and 70s to invent mountain biking as a thing. So one thing, one kind of theme we want to keep 
sort of front and center all semester long with this class is that um, forestry, but in particular forest recreation and park management, because it's not just focused on the trees and the watersheds and the ecosystems, but also the highly dynamic overlay and interface of human beings in those places, um, it changes. It's a constantly moving target for quality and safety for the people, like people who are super and legit justified, excited about the experiences they're having out there, but also top shelf ecological management and protection of those places. So everybody else can come back and do it again next year in the face of stuff like climate change, okay? So that's gonna be tricky. Um, and the, the factoid we'll leave each other with a couple minutes early today is that, uh, with all things being equal on the current track that we're on climate wise, by the end of your lifetime, uh, around the year 2080, 2085, um, depending on your typical life expectancy for your particular setup, um, Southern Illinois is gonna have the climate and rainfall pattern of Southern Oklahoma and Northwestern Texas if we continue on our current so-called business as usual track, warming up the surface of the earth on average about four degrees centigrade. That is A, gonna make Southern Illinois and the rest of America kind of unrecognizable from what it looked like and also provide some pretty existential threats for uh, a lot of folks around the world. So, um, Forest recreation is a pretty fun and light, forward-looking kind of thing. But some genuinely serious threats to human cause. All right, cool. I'm gonna hang around. So that's the end of our formal program for today. Um, again, I'll upload this, throw this on the website, and uh, start making the. Um, the course files available to you guys. You can download those and, and move to those. Um, I'll be your questions. I was taking a lot. Uh, you're cutting out. Uh, Dr. Logan, you there? He's gone. That yeah, class is over. We just missed. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Thanks uh, if you got him. I've got a quick question. Yeah, Dylan, what's up? Um, so I'm a park ranger at Wren Lake, uh, U.S. Army Corps, and um, and I was just kind of wondering, like for like summer credits, if like what kind of transfers for that? Because like I really want to do the field trip, but like I didn't know what time they'd want me to come back to the lake, and like is there anything that can kind of transfer for me doing my job? Yeah. Um, yeah, so there's uh, a couple of ways we can go with that. Um, first of all, the, the timing of camp and summer stuff uh, is And I'd say most years, a majority of years, I have at least one or a couple of students who are doing exactly what you're doing. Uh, so already working federally and stuff like that, uh, or with like a friends of group at a national park or national forest. Um, so not for the federal government, but on site. And um, they got to get right to that. And the uh, our forestry programs, you know, are like ranked what second in the country um, at the undergraduate level. Like this is a pretty big deal already know that um, at some point you got to knock out summer camp. Um, so that's the last two weeks of May, first two weeks of June, uh, regardless of whether it's rec or resource camp. And um, then and I'm always <laughs> uh, as from summer camp, summer camp is for the class formally ends on paper. So if we get a long distance, we just go right through.
I think I might just ask this question in person. <laughs> I'm back. All right. So I'm not sure exactly where I cut off there. Um, uh, last I heard was like you said, like obviously the summer camp that I need, I know I need to do at the end of the semester or the, in that time. That's mm -hmm. all I heard though. Okay. So you missed basically all of that. All right. So <laughs> uh, short recap on that is um, that this is a known thing. Um, we have a gazillion forestry alums um, at Ren Lake or move through Ren Lake and stuff like that. So this is like, this is not a huge surprise. Yeah, so it's Oh no. It happened again. Yep, I am now the host of this. Uh <laughs> Oh no. Oh, oh yeah. What happened? What's happening? Um, I don't know what to do. <laughs> How's everybody doing? Yeah. I got an idea. How about I record some answers to the frequently asked questions about summer camp offline? And then we don't have to go through this painful dance over and over. Yeah, that, that'd be great. That's all right. That sounds good. All right, let's do that. Um, cool. So. Oh, no. What is with the connection? And um, that stuff so you can get your plans together. Okay, sounds great. Do I, uh, you took that back, right? I'm not the host anymore. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, perfect. And the and